good afternoon. Uh, I'm Larry Spencer, and I'm a member of the uh, sort of uh, retired faculty and staff PSU 150th anniversary committee, and we are videotaping a, a lot of uh, past faculty and staff members from the college. And today we're happy to have Dr. Catherine Fraley. I know it's very formal, Katie. So <laughs> maybe you can tell a little bit about uh, how did you end up here at Plymouth, and what was your position while you were at Plymouth? I know. That We've talked with your husband, and so we probably hopefully get a different story than what he told us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I ended up here because Dick came here. Um, what he didn't say is when we first came up, the first interview, the second interview, we, I came up. We got off at Ashland, and we came up on this road that was kind of really potholes. The side was all washed out. There were rocks all over. And I thought, dear God, where are we going? And we got into Plymouth, and what we didn't know is that you had had a terrible rainstorm and a washout, and there had been a flood. So I was, that was good. But anyway, I, when I got here, I was ready to have a baby. I worked at the elementary school and the high school. I was a, I'm a reading specialist. I have a master's degree from BU in uh, reading and uh, literacy. So I didn't actually come and work at Plymouth State for quite a while. I was one of those faculty wives, and we had a lot of good programs going. But I started by coming in the summer. Gail Flickinger was in the education department, and I met her through reading programs, and she said, I'm running a gifted program. You're going to help me. So I started helping her doing that in the summers. Well, off and on, we went off to the Azores for 15 months, came back, and I think I worked at the pass office for a couple of years with students, because another background is working with special ed kids. So then Gail was going to take a sabbatical, and she said, you're going to quit your job, and you're going to take my place. I'm taking a sabbatical. I said, OK, why not? So I think I started working here in 84. Okay. And I actually worked full time at Plymouth for 20, 24 years. Okay. Um, and then when I retired in 07, I worked for another five or so years uh, supervising student teachers in the Seacoast. So I actually, in my career, worked for 50 years in education. And then I retired. So I came to Plymouth in the education department uh, as a faculty member, teaching methods courses, reading courses, a lot of reading, children's lit, um, in the undergraduate program. Um, and that was, and that grew because I started teaching in the graduate so program. So how big was the education department when you first started there? Well, actually, we were, we were a pretty good sized department. I think phys ed and, and elementary ed were two of the bigger departments there. So we had a, we had a good round of faculty. Um, and we grew, and we grew a lot. Um, we had a really good program. We strengthened the program year after year. I think the biggest plus on the education program at Plymouth is that our students were out in the field from the very first year they were here. They had an intro course, they had to put hours in. Mm. We had them out in the reading courses. They would go out once a week. Um, we had methods courses where they were in a classroom every single week. Mm. Um, we had two methods courses. And then our student teaching, which was far more than the state recommended. We had more time and more hours. So our, our kids were well prepared, and they got jobs. They would get jobs before other state education programs. Now, have you been in a situation where you've been in the Boston airport and one of your students comes up and says, Yes, I've met students. I keep in touch with them on Facebook. Um, but it's really hard. It, look, the woman you recommend, you recognize easier. But, you know, when the guys graduate, they're still kids. So they're men now. And they're like, don't you remember me? So <laughs> they get the name and I'm okay. But... Um, yeah, we do. And, then, and they've become principals, superintendents, faculty in different universities. So we've had them go on and, mm -hmm. you know, they're yeah. still out there. They win awards every year, especially the Eddie Awards from New Hampshire. There's always Plymouth State kids in there. in there. Yeah. 
Well, when we did an interview with your husband, he mentioned he came here, you know, when Plymouth was just a very small town. And I know women have quite a bit different, uh, uh, what shall we say, uh, opinion of what a town is like, and what was it like for you being a woman in a small town like Plymouth? Well, it was a small town. And I delivered a baby in November, so I did meet other women that had little kids. Our oldest son was in kindergarten. So thank goodness that you could go pick them up and you'd meet people. But I would go back to Durham. I, but even when I lived in Durham, I went to Boston to the market to shop. Mm -hmm. So up here it was a little so isolated, a little Boston. isolated. But I love the mountains, you know, and we hiked all the time, we camped all the time, we ski. We did spend our summers on the Cape most of the time when Dick was working at Woods Hole. So, but but there was there were people there were people around. When I had my first son, we lived in a in a city, Melrose, mm -hmm. and I really didn't know anyone that had a kid. So being here and having children and having other wives and moms and friends, it, it was easier. But it was a cute town. It was a cuter town than Plymouth, than Durham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I can remember my wife. Uh, I don't know within a year or two had a baby shower and she wanted to buy some pins for diapers. And she had to go down to Concord because there, there was no place in the area that sold you know, either blue pins or pink pins that you can put diapers Right, and we had to use diapers. Okay, so my parents are like, we'll give you diaper service. No, there's no diaper service here. <laughs> well, how about a milk van? No, there's no milk van, none of that. But um, yeah, that was funny, I, yeah, buying things. I did go to Concord to buy groceries. So uh, what did you see in terms of, you know, let's say the students that you had when you first started teaching in the 80s as compared to the students that you had when you, you know, were close to, closer to retirement and finished up? Well, I, I, you know, I love the students, and if I miss anything about teaching, I miss the kids. And I really, we had good students. We had kids that were first generation, kids that um, had parents as teachers, kids that didn't know what they wanted to do. But they were all exciting. They were some were shy, some were outgoing. But they all worked, and you you'd help them grow. So they came in as kids, and they went out as professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, we had small classes, so we were pretty lucky there. Uh, we one to one. Um, they weren't as sophisticated. Most of them wanted to stay in the state, uh, but as jobs got a little scarce in the state, we could see them branching out. Um, and, but I think e all the time that I taught here, we still had first generation kids. I think that was, uh, you know, the Plymouth was really good with helping mm. first generation students. Um, I think our program strengthened. We did more with them, uh, getting them out, making them professional, following the state standards, which were pretty strict for a little state. I think our state standards were a lot better than other states. Mm. And our kids graduated from Plymouth. They could teach in any state in this country. In Nevada, they had to take a Nevada history course. Other than that, they could go to any state. And we kept that going. We used NCATE, a national certification. So we kept that, that our students would always be accepted in any state. Um, I think our students came out of high schools as time went on better prepared. Um, so that made it a little bit easier with writing skills, some math skills, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, well, another thing, I mean, you had, you saw students in the classroom, but you said you also observed students that were actually out there in their own classrooms working. Mm -hmm. And what what kind of differences did you see in kind of relationship between those two situations, between having a student in your own classroom and observing them? No, as a teacher. As a teacher. Well, it's a big learning experience for all of us. Some of them are natural teachers. They probably could have, like in the old days after high school, been a teacher. Some of them were so nervous. They were such good students, but they were really nervous. Mm -hmm. So you would try to work with them and their co-op and, you know, convincing them that they could do this. And they would, and they did. They grew and they could continue doing it. We also saw students that we thought, you know, you're teaching, but in three or four years you go get a master's, you would be a great administrator, or you would be really good at, at this. Um, 
or coming back and teaching at Pona State. Mm -hmm. And actually, over the years, because I was there for so many years, we had classroom teachers that we taught to be classroom teachers who now were supervising our st new student teachers. Um, and we even had them come back as adjuncts in teams. We taught methods as teams. Mm -hmm. So we would bring a teacher in residence, is what we call them. So they would help with our team. And we could see bringing our own students back as team members. So over those 21, 20, 24 to you know, 29 years, we, we were doing that. So we were strengthening that and keeping that cycle going. And you mentioned Gail Flickinger sort yeah. of like, uh, as a mentor for she you. She was my mentor. She was. Uh, is there anybody else that actually act as a mentor for you? Well, I think at the, at the time, um, Ginny Barry was uh, actually, she was a faculty member and she was heading the uh, Children's Center and then came back when, I'm trying to think who left us, um, uh, Ken Huser was a, um, a chair at a time. He was a good mentor as well, mm -hmm. although he said, leave the little kid stuff to me. <laughs> okay. But uh, Ginny was a great mentor too. Um, so we've had, you know, we've had good chairs and there's some reciprocality there. Is there anybody that you act, feel like you've acted as a mentor for and that, that you've kept in contact with? And oh, and lots of, lots of the new teachers that as they came in, we mentored the new faculty. Um, let me see, well, it was uh, Lynn Davis, who still lives here in the area. Um, I know I helped her a lot. Um, Irene Mosdale um, was one of my she was a grad student and did her grad practicum with me when I was reading specialist at Plymouth Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And then we hired her as a teacher in residence. And then we hired her and said, you gotta go on. She got her master's here, but she had to go on at UNH. And um, she was a faculty member and she, she brought the program up to the North Country, mm -hmm. literally teaching up there. Um, I think the other thing that we did that expanded was um, I ran a graduate program for a reading specialist. So we had a master's degree in reading specialist. You had to have a master's to be a reading specialist. And so I established that and ran that program. And we brought that program. We brought it up to Twin Mountain, driving up 93 mm -hmm. in moose country in the winter was not fun, <laughs> but we did it. We brought it over to Claremont, um, so we brought it to different places different areas, too. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and of course, you, you talked about your discipline and you know education. Mm. What, what kind of changes did you see actually in the structure of the college while you were here in terms of you know, how, how the college seemed to function when you first started it as compared to the way the college functions? Yeah, the, the well, I think, I, you know, we had our departments, we had, um, we had strong committees, whether they were, you know, the college committees, but working on curriculum, working on uh, growth for the college. I think that was a big thing. Um, I think in our department is just keeping up with standards, making sure that we met them all. We work collaboratively on groups. I can remember working with people and your department on math, uh, the science standards, mm -hmm. and in the math department on the math standards. I even worked in geography and social science on geography and history standards. They're not my fields, but I like them. But we did a lot of collaboration mm -hmm. back then. And you, that was pretty much because the size of the college was facilitating the yeah. between. Yeah. So I think when you came here, uh, maybe the road went through the middle of the campus and... Oh, right. You could drive right down to the back of T Hall. There were no street lights. Hear that? No red, green lights, no traffic lights. So, when we left, there was one traffic light out on Tenney Mountain. How many now? Quite a few. Quite a few, yes. Course, so that was a big change. When you drove into town today, you noticed the roundabout that you had. Oh, and the roundabout came after we left. Right, which is a real, actually, a, very much as an improvement. Yeah. Uh, but what's your impression of a little bit of the campus today as compared to when you were here before? Well, I think it's great. And it's a walking campus, which is nice. And uh, it's and now you've got a big conference center over there. Right. Um, 
we come up. We come up every year to ETC. We always come up to Trisha's place. Um, Trish was another person in my department who I kind of mentored, but I just love Trish because of her excitement about kids and, and teaching. But um, so we come up for that. We come up for the retired faculty and staff luncheon. And we usually come up for something now and then or somebody's retirement party. So. Right, right. right. <laughs> or somebody's funeral, right? Yes, or <laughs> yeah. I sadly. Or old, or yes. Uh, so uh, you probably didn't have much of an option since your husband was always in, already employed at Plymouth. But <laughs> what is it that made you think that the right decision had been made to, to come to Plymouth? Well, it was a job offer. We had loans to pay right. off. Um, we liked, you know, after the initial being here, we liked it. Um, because we had done camping up here and we'd climbed, and we had been skiing at Waterville a couple of times. Um, so we just, it was, the, it was the right place. And you know what? It was a great place to bring up your kids. Mm -hmm. Your kids could go out and play. They had to be home before dark, you know, or for supper. Um, I, I would do it again. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, and I still think it's a great place to bring up kids. Uh, living on a, near a college campus made it easier for them to make transitions into college for our children to do that. Um, so I, so the changes, yeah, they're good. I mean, you know, the circle works, the bridge is better. Right, right. right. <laughs> and yeah. you have a skating rink. Right, right, <laughs> wonderful skating rink. And, uh, yeah. And of course, you haven't probably had a chance to see the new uh, wellness center, but uh, that's a new building. Right, and that's new. Yeah. The building. yeah. Right, and you probably haven't seen on the far end of the old uh, building down there. They have actually put in the HPER offices. They uh, oh. cut the, the what do you want to call it, field house in half, and then structured in the other half. Oh, so there is an addition to yeah. that field house. Well, it's not an addition, addition but they restructured. Yeah, yeah. it and looked it's a different. It's beautiful facility with the, that's where the HPER office is now. Oh. They were in DNM, and then they right. took them out of DNM. Uh, and of course, in DNM, uh, they have pretty much given that over to uh, the art department, but also it's called Makerspace. Oh. Uh, you know, where they're going to have a bunch of computers and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. for, for yeah. students to do. Wow. Uh, you, you mentioned a little bit of your contribution talking about the masters and, and what have you. Are there some other things that you think that you might have made a contribution to the campus? Well, uh, of course, we did a lot of committee work and we, I was on committees all the time, which is fun. Mm -hmm. We, um, because in my profession, we always did workshops. Mm -hmm. um, we would do them, some of them I did myself, some I did with other colleagues. And we would go all over the country. We would go to Canada, Brazil. Um, we would often take students with us. So they would be part of that contribution that they were working on. And these were un undergrads, not mm -hmm. sometimes grads, but we took our undergrad students with us and we brought them to conferences when we had New England Reading Conference or the International Reading Conference. We would bring our students and they would help present and I think that furthered their ability to go on and grow in their field as well. Now, were you involved in any, uh, I guess you would say, faculty governance in any sense, uh, or you know, campus-wide faculty committees? Or yeah, there were. Can yeah, I was on the. Oh gosh, the curriculum committee. What was the one? The uh, judicial committee. Kids in trouble. <laughs> oh, for for uh, yeah for, for, faculty for review that committees. review committees. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were several committees that, were, that I was on. And again, you were here long enough to have had different presidents and, and different deans and provosts. Right. Uh, any one of those made any kind of impact on you that, uh, that you can remember any experience of dealing with them directly or indirectly? Well, or? I know when um, Bill Farrell came, I was, as I said, I worked with Trish, uh, tr not Trish, with uh, Gail on the um, Gifted and Talented, and then I ran that summer program mm -hmm. for years. And Farrell was very good about giving, uh, I wrote a grant, so we had grant money. And then when the grant money run, ran out, 
um, I applied for money from the college and I, they to get it all back, but I needed money up front right, to so get things exactly. going. And they were very good about doing that. So I did that for the summer. We had the, and then we ran Super Saturdays for grade kids. And then we ran a program for high school kids. And that was done, um, we did it one afternoon um, a, a month. And we would get college faculty to give a lecture and they break into groups and I would have group leaders. Sometimes they were my older students or they would be other faculty. So the kids would talk. So we had people from science and social studies and business and computers and you know all the different fields. Um, so this college was very good at supporting that, giving me the upfront money. There was a fee for that. And I made money for them. <laughs> Not a lot. Right. So, you know, so I was active doing that. Uh, you know, here, here's an interesting question for you. I mean, living in the town of Plymouth and you have a certain feeling for the, the nature of the college and, and what's going on in the college. Now that you have retired and moved away from, from Plymouth, uh, when you talk to people and you say, oh, I thought of Plymouth or I really lived in Plymouth, what is the, what's the response that you get from some of those people? I, they thought it was great. You know, if they ask about Plymouth, what's it like? And I said, it's a great school. It's uh, small classes. You don't have these, I hope, giant 300 kids in a lecture room. Um, we've recommended Plymouth to lots of people, you know, when they were looking for schools. So, I, you know, I, I'm still really proud to work here. And I, I don't know about all these clusters. I know there's <laughs> controversy. And I would hate to think that we were all splattered around someplace. And especially mm -hmm. in my field, you know, you you need to work as a as a, as a group, group. group. Essentially, you are a cluster anyway. We are a cluster. Right, yes, right. Well, that's yeah. So, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you might want to add? Uh, you know, uh, in terms of something interesting story that happened to you, or interesting event that took place, or something that was unusual that. Uh, might have happened while you were here in Plymouth or even off of campus and that might reflect back on you. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you meet kids all, students all the time. Um, I don't know. Just. <laughs> Dick's, Dick's the storyteller, right? I don't, I don't know. Do I have any stories? Any? <laughs> Well, one that comes to mind for me is uh, when you got a flat tire. Uh, coming home from someplace, you got a flat tire in the car in the middle of the winter. Oh, and one of those years. people stopped there. Oh, yeah, people all. It took about two minutes before right. half a dozen people. People came by to help. Yes, right. that's right. that's true. Yes. I mean, it yeah. is so wonderful being in a small community. Or, where or when the state. Know who yes. You are and, or and when the state trooper told Dick that I was speeding up the highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we thank you very much for you know being with us today and, and giving us your time and, and sort of reflections on what it was like to be at Plymouth. Uh, you know, some would say that both you and your husband here were in the golden age of Plymouth, but <laughs> we don't know whether that golden age is going to continue on in the future. Uh, you know, it is interesting that in terms of the number of high school students that are going on uh, is, is smaller and declining, and yeah. so Plymouth is. <coughs> you have to compete even more, and I think you mentioned, and Dick mentioned, the quality of the education that the students get here at Plymouth is one of our strong points. It is, and it's personal, I think. I think there's yeah. still a lot of faculty here who really take that Care time about to students. work about the students. Right. The other thing that we would do when we were teaching our summer grad courses, and Dick had all his science people and I had all my reading education people, mm -hmm. we would have a big cookout at our mm -hmm. house, and they all came together. And it was great because they would all start talking right. and you know realizing that we do different things. We're at the same place, and Which I would happen at a huge yeah. school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks again for coming. And, uh, Thank you. I hope this will work out for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least it will.